MailChimp is much more than just email marketing these days. It's a suite of marketing capabilities. But email marketing is still very much its bread and butter and where it originates from. But who can we actually send email marketing to from MailChimp? And who can we send other email campaigns to? Well, if we look at MailChimp, in MailChimp's terms of use, and I'm just going to scroll down. By agreeing to these terms, you promise to follow these rules. You will not send spam. And spam is defined at the Spam House website. Also, MailChimp says, sorry, you may not send emails to anyone that violate the CAN spam laws. So, there we go. The CAN spam laws and uh, what Spam House defines as uh, as spam. So, spam house, the word spam is applied to email means unsolicited. Unsolicited means a recipient has not granted verifiable permission and so it carries on. The CAN Spam Act also then carries on and identifies what in the US, for example, can and can't be sent or to whom it can and can't be sent. And most countries or all countries have their uh, their spam and privacy act. So, for example, in the European Union, <clears throat> excuse me, there's the GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation. This defines uh, what the marketer needs to do and so on. This goes as far as saying who can we actually post information to. So if you're going to use MailChimp for postcards, we need permission from the person that we can send them even a postcard. In Australia, we have something called the Spam Act, and so on, and so on it goes on. And this defines, so when we send email marketing in particular, we need to adhere to, yes, the uh, the Can, Can Spam Act, um, and we also need to adhere to the spam regulations of where our recipients are located. And that can be very difficult to know. Okay. But there's something going on and else going on in the background. That's called a feedback loop. What happens is that when we send an email out, something happens to that email. Okay, it's it's read by someone, maybe someone clicks on it, maybe someone marks it as spam, maybe someone deletes it. Now, what that person does with the email is reported back to central repositories because our email that we send goes through spam filters, etc. No spam filters look at at, um, at where the email has come from, looks at the domain and said, is this a reputable domain or not? So each of our domains has a reputation score. If we have a low score, if our domain has a low score, we have less of a chance of our emails getting through spam filters. If we have a good, a high reputation score, our emails are more likely to get through spam filters. So if you send me an email for example, and I mark it manually as spam, in other words, mark it as junk or spam manually, it counts against your domain. It's sent back to a central repository, which is then distributed again to various spam filters and so on that says, just watch out for that domain. It's got a bad reputation. So every one of us has a reputation score. The reputation score goes up or gets better as people read and interact with our emails. As people mark our emails as spam, the reputation goes down and we have less of a chance of getting through spam filters. For example, here is a Cisco product. They're one of these repositories. So various spam services, uh, sorry, various email services report back to Talus when an email is marked as spam, for example. Talus then reports that information back into various spam filters. So we can see, for example, that globally for December 2018, the average daily legitimate volume was 53 billion emails circulating the web and 311 spam. So it's pretty much out of control. We can really drill down. So I'm in Australia at the moment. I'm in Brisbane, Australia, which is here. If I just zoom in very slightly, um, you'll notice that there's a little red mark here. So what it's saying is that someone, oh, sorry, the back one, Someone in Brisbane at the moment is being marked as a spammer. We can even go down further and we can look at the email reputation of 
different domain names. So if I scroll down, for example, you'll see some have a poor domain score and so on. So that means that that domain is or has been marked as a spammer a, a certain amount of of times. So every single one of our domains has the score. So yes, we have these rules and regulations and laws which we have to adhere to. But furthermore, it's important to know that each of our domains has a score and that that corresponds directly to how many of our emails get through spam filters and not. Now, when we send email from MailChimp, for example, we use our domain. So maybe it's garysclass.com. I've got garysclass.com. It's sending. I then use MailChimp to send, so I'm using their servers. So if I get marked as a spammer, my email, my um, email, garysclass.com, suffers, and MailChimp's does too. So MailChimp has a vested interest in monitoring what of their customers or who of their customers is spamming. The way they know that is how many emails are getting marked as, uh, as spam or, or manually marked as junk. So in your reports, and we do go into this in the report section, um, MailChimp is really looking at very many things, but, but two things are, are very important when it comes to the negative side of email marketing. So open rates are positive, you know, good open rate, a good click rate, and so on. But if you have a high hard bounce rate, in other words, a lot of your email addresses can't be delivered, the recipient server says, this person doesn't exist, that's a sign of a list that's not very healthy. You might have purchased the list, something like that. If a lot of people have marked, and when I say a lot, I mean more than about 0.1, 0.2% of your recipients have marked your emails as spam, that is a very strong indicator that you are sending spam messages. MailChimp, if you do get marked as a spammer too much, they will usually first give you a warning. Um, and getting you to agree to your terms and conditions and so on again, and then they will disable your account because it does hurt uh, MailChimp's sending reputation if their customers get sent, uh, get marked as a spammer. And this is one of the reasons that MailChimp has such a high uh, sending reputation in that um, they are careful about their customers not getting marked as a spammer and so on. So there are certain other things we also can't send through MailChimp. Okay, right, we've got laws. And we need to adhere to those but we've also got the self-managing feedback loops loop that happens with reputation domain reputation but there are also certain industries that are known uh, to get marked as spam more often than others and mailchimp won't let us in from you know if we're part of certain of these industries and it will provide extra uh, scrutiny uh, for other industries so for example Please don't use MailChimp to send anything offensive. So if you're selling anything illegal and so on, if you're violating, violating the Can Spam Act or pornography, sexually explicit content, you cannot send it through MailChimp. Other industries will have higher uh, scrutiny by MailChimp, such as even affiliate marketing so or, or multi-level marketing. So if you're into Amway, Herbalife and so on, uh, list brokers and so on. So we MailChimp has a vested interest in being ethical about it and they do that through monitoring what people do making sure they adhere to legal practices as well as not not being identified as a spammer in mailchimp itself we can do something to increase the chance of our email getting through spam filters what happens technically when i send you an email for example I use my domain name let's say I'm using MailChimp servers your system then looks and says okay this was sent from garysclass.com but it was sent from MailChimp servers did garysclass.com say they're actually going to be sending emails from uh, MailChimp servers and if the answer is yet you've got yes sorry you've got a higher chance of getting through spam filters so this is just something we need to do so in MailChimp we need to do this Log into MailChimp. To the top right of the screen, click your name or your account name. So I'm, I'm just going to disable uh, the video just so you can see me a little bit better. Right, then click account. Settings. And domains. 
I'm just going to scroll down slightly. You'll see I have multiple domains. So we can use one MailChimp uh, sorry, account to send from multiple domains. So to add a new domain in MailChimp, I could click verify a domain, add an email address of the domain I want to add, and click send verification email. Then when that email is clicked, it'll come back as verified. But there's one more step to help us get through those spam filters a little bit more effectively, and that's authenticating our domain. So if you don't have authenticated against your domain here, what you want to do is click authenticate. And what this, what these instructions are saying is we need to add a record to well, your domain name saying that you're going to be sending emails through MailChimp. If you're not familiar with adding records to your domains, the best thing to do is to copy this, drop it in an email, and ask your IT person, your website person, etc. to do it for you. It's a very quick job if you know what you're doing, but you don't want to get it wrong. So again, what we want to do is we, come, we click our name up to the top of the screen. We click account. We click settings, domains, and wherever you have verified and not authenticated, click authenticate. Either follow these instructions or if you don't know what you're doing, copy it and send it to your IT person or someone that knows what to do with your domain. Once they've made the necessary changes to your domain, just wait maybe two, three days and come back and click authenticate domain. And there you, you have a higher chance of getting your emails through spam filters.